Check this out. Hey Google, turn the lights on. Woohoo! <laughs> even got the hallway one. I'm gonna show you all the features and I'm gonna show you how to install it. All right, let's get this smart home control out of the box. This is the main panel. And then on the back, you have the contact points there for the main control module right here. This is going to be installed in the gang box. Very well built, by the way. They include some pre-strip color-coded wiring as well. And a very generous amount of wire nuts so you don't have to get your own wire nuts. The smart home control comes with some paperwork, shows you what app to download. And then you have some safety cards here, quick start guide. And they include stickers to properly mark the wires in your wall, which will help significantly on the installation process. They include the QR code as well to help you find the app quicker for your Apple or Android device. Okay, now that we have everything out of the box, let's get to the installation. The first and most essential step is to make sure you turn off the power to the switch you'll be working on. Of course, the next step is take the faceplate off of the switches, and I'm using the Vessel rechargeable screwdriver. You can use whatever kind of tool you want to remove the faceplate. In this location, I got four light switches with two receptacles in a two gang box inside the wall. So we're gonna have to take everything out and I'm gonna replace the two gang box with a three gang box. This was the hardest part of the installation, by the way, and you'll see why here in a minute. All right, now it's time for the tough build jab saw to make some extra room here on this wall for that three gang box that we're gonna install. This is where I found something unusual behind the drywall. I have never seen this in a home where they put some spray foam behind or around the gang box. So I had to cut around the gang box and just basically cut through that foam. Next thing to do is just untwist all the original wires since we're going to be reconfiguring them to the smart home control configuration requirements. That foam really started getting to me, but look right here, I'm just trying to cut around the gang box and just have that foam release and it was look at this it was it wouldn't budge i broke the gang box I, you're gonna see the wall just kind of breaking apart here a little bit and i had to stick my whole hand in there to push away the foam that was stuck to the back of the drywall now you're not going to run across this situation in most homes this was just unique to my home but we finally got it out in spite of all that foam being stuck to the back of the drywall and we can move forward with the installation. After removing all that foam, I just pulled out all the wires to get it ready for the new three gang wall box, which is right here. Now I'm just putting the wires in the holes of the gang box exactly where I want them to be along with the grounding wire. Then I tested the fit in the cutout that I made and it was a little bit off not being exactly level. So I got my jab saw again and just trimmed out some of that drywall that was keeping the three gang box from being level. And now we're good to go. Nice and level for the module. Now this was the only line bringing power from the breaker box to this three gang box. The rest of the black lines were load lines that went to all the different lights that will be powered by this module. I am not a licensed electrician so whatever terminology i'm getting wrong let me know in the comments if you're an electrician the next step according to the instructions was to twist all the ground wires together with a ground wire nut which is always green and has a hole at the top that way you can slide it down one extended ground wire and twist all the other ground wires together just like that i didn't need that much excess ground wire so i removed some of it all right now that we have all the ground wires together the next step is to securely fasten the ground wire to the main module here just loosen up that green screw a little bit and then properly insert the ground wire and tighten the green screw back down. I always tug on the wire a little bit to make sure it's securely fastened down. The next step following the ground wiring step is to twist all the white wires together and then add the pre-stripped white line to that twisted bunch of white lines. Make sure that wire nut is securely twisted onto all of those white lines. At this point, you can see I'm pretty excited because we're making good progress now. There is only one silver screw on this module and that is where that pre-stripped white line that's connected to the bunch of white lines will be securely fastened. Now the next step for my specific wire configuration is to grab three of those pre-stripped wires and connect them to the main line that's providing the power to this outlet. And then those three pre-stripped wires will be connected to those three black screw sections right there at the top. Make sure there is no exposed wiring on any of the wires after you install them into the module. Now these three black wires feed off of the main line that come to the gang box. So again, just make sure everything is securely tightened down. The remaining three black wires here in the gang box are gonna be secured down to the bottom of the module. These lines run to the three different light fixtures that will be powered on and controlled by the brilliant smart home control device. 
All right, after you have all your wiring completed, this is what it should look like. We have the ground wire here securely fastened, then the three top lines are the main power lines that give power to the module, and then those three bottom lines are the ones that feed all the light fixtures. That's why I only used one sticker was to just not mix up the main power line with any of the other black lines. Now this line right here was a dead line, so we had no use for it. We just capped it and left it alone. All right, at this point, just make sure all your wire nuts are securely twisted down with a snug, tight grip on all the wire wires and make sure all your screws have all the wires securely fastened to the module as well. Now we can securely fasten the module onto the gang box and we're going to get ready to test out the module before we put the face cover on. This is how you test your lights. She's going to go ahead and push the lights and I'm going to show you which ones they are. That's for the hallway. This one does our main kitchen. And that one gets the lights above our sink. It's working great. That's how you test it. I felt lined up. Okay. So it looks clean. <laughs> okay, the first step after the final step of the physical installation is to connect your brilliant smart home control device to your Wi Fi. Depending on when you get your device, it may need to do an update, so just let it go through its update process if it has to. Then just scan the QR code through the app on your smart device. Once it's connected to your Wi Fi, you can start customizing the brilliant smart home control to your liking. You can go through the demonstration video on the device itself if you'd like to and just start testing out some of these slide light features where you can dim and brighten all your lights so this is a great feature i like this uh, up and down sliding of the finger on the device so no switches involved whatsoever the lights respond very well to the different dimming or brightening settings that you choose you can turn all the lights that are connected to this device on or off simultaneously by using two fingers at the same time on the touch screen all right now we select google assistant you also have apple home kit or amazon alexa for me personally, this is one of my favorite features where you can enable live view access to the camera right up here in the upper right corner. What's really great about this feature is if you have a smart security camera or a smart spotlight with a camera, you can access that camera through this screen and see who's outside or in the yard. And if that same smart camera has a microphone or a speaker, you can communicate with whoever is outside and they with you. As you can see here, you can control smart lights, smart thermostats, and smart audio devices if they're compatible with the brilliant smart home control. There's an intercom feature as well, and you can control all your smart lights individually off the touch screen or those slide channels there. So I was already working on customizing it to her liking. It's called creating a scene. It has motion detection as well. She already got the family photo album up here. So the camera's currently being viewed. It's coming. It has a little slider on it, so if you want privacy, privacy. look we at do that. Not want privacy. Yeah, we're gonna use this thing. You can turn the sound on remotely to hear whatever's going on in the room in which the device is installed, and of course, you can use the hold the talk button to communicate with anyone that is in that room through the intercom. Hey, you guys better go to bed. Can you see us? Yeah. Please dismiss to end this session. Okay, so I can cut you off from this side, Ira. Here's another really cool feature or option. If you have a device that they don't have yet on their software, you can reach out to them and they might do an upgrade for your device. So you just touch it and it'll turn the light on or off. And then the sliding is for dimming or brightening. Nice little feature we didn't know about. This is the smart home control panel by Brilliant. It has Alexa built in, Apple HomeKit, and Hey Google. This particular model replaces a three gang light switch. They also have single, double, and quadruple light switch models. Brilliant smart home control works with all these smart home products and more. It's a great list right here, seeing that it's compatible with so many of these different brands out there. They also have dimmer switches and smart plugs. Here's a list of some of the features that the Brilliant smart home control can add to your home. You can find this product on Amazon. If this video helped you with the installation process or with just deciding whether you want to get the brilliant smart home control device, let me know in the comments. And if you like tool tech, DIY, and deal videos, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to continue making those type of videos. Until next time, I only hope all the best to you and yours. Hey Google, turn off all the lights.